Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a simple molecular substance. You should then be able to describe the properties of simple molecular substances and relate these to the bonding present. These properties are melting and boiling points, solubility and electrical conductivity. In the last few videos, we've been looking at intermolecular forces and I introduced you to the idea of simple molecular substances. I'm showing you two simple molecular substances here. Simple molecular substances include elements such as iodine, as well as compounds such as water. So what's meant by a simple molecular substance? Well firstly, in simple molecular substances, the atoms are covalently bonded to each other. Secondly, simple molecular substances have got small molecules with a fixed number of atoms. For example, every molecule of water has one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. The vast majority of covalent substances are simple molecular substances. I'm showing you here the structures of diamond and graphite. Both diamond and graphite are examples of giant covalent structures, and we'll be looking at them in later videos. I'm showing you here the melting and boiling points of some simple molecular substances. Now the first key idea you need to understand is that simple molecular substances have low melting and boiling points, and this is due to the intermolecular forces. Now we can illustrate this by looking at the halogens. As you can see at room temperature and pressure, fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. Now if we cool any simple molecular substance to below its melting point, then it will form a solid. And scientists call the structure of these solids a simple molecular lattice. I'm showing you here the simple molecular lattice of solid iodine, but I should point out that all the halogens form a simple molecular lattice in the solid form. Molecules of iodine consist of two iodine atoms joined by a single covalent bond. In between the molecules, we have intermolecular forces. Now, as we said before, an iodine molecule consists of two atoms of iodine. Because these atoms both have the same electronegativity, the iodine molecule is nonpolar. This means that only induced dipole dipole interactions, in other words, London forces, act between the molecules. Remember that London forces are weak and take very little energy to break. So because simple molecular substances have weak intermolecular forces, they all have low melting and boiling points. Now if we look again at the first four halogens, we can see an interesting trend. As the number of electrons in the halogen molecule increases, the melting and boiling points both increase. And again, this is due to intermolecular forces. Remember that the strength of the London forces increases with increasing number of electrons. So because iodine molecules have such a large number of electrons, the melting and boiling points of iodine are higher than the other halogens. Looking again at the first table, we can see that water also has a relatively high melting and boiling point compared to other simple molecular substances. I'm showing you here the simple molecular lattice of ice. In ice, the water molecules are held in place by intermolecular forces. However, unlike in iodine, these intermolecular forces include hydrogen bonds, and we looked at hydrogen bonds in a previous video. When we melt ice, we've got to break these hydrogen bonds, and because hydrogen bonds are relatively strong compared to other intermolecular forces, it takes quite a lot of energy to break hydrogen bonds. This explains why water has a relatively high melting and boiling point. In the next video, we look at the solubility of simple molecular substances and their electrical conductivity.